hey guys my name is crystal welcome back to the channel if you're new here welcome we talk about general home improvements and like life happening so do stick around if you're interested in any of that today's video is going to be a relatively short one i'm hoping to do like a series of this versus like a brain dump with all the information that i've learned in one very long video so hopefully i can keep this short and sweet I, based on my last video that was an hour long, I am so sorry about that. I did not think it would end up being that much to talk about, but I really appreciate all the feedback that I got from it. Like you guys are so amazing. So I am sort of incorporating a lot of the advice that I got in that video in that I'm going to start with Airbnb, give it like a full genuine try, and then see if that allows me to sort of live a more nomadic lifestyle so that I can rent out this house. And then when I'm not here, I can go to Undangi, but then still keep it part time. So it is still about kind of finding a balance and figuring out what the next six months look like at least so yeah we are talking about all the things that i have learned about setting up an airbnb listing because i've genuinely never looked into it before so i'm really hoping that the things that i'm learning are helpful to anyone who's considering going into that business because i have a couple of friends who are actively looking into it so i thought why not come here and share everything that i've learned everything that i'm learning along the way if maybe i misunderstand something someone out there can correct me maybe i don't know but yeah i think um today's video i just want to talk to you about the listing options because this is not something i knew up front and i feel like maybe it would seem a little less intimidating if someone had explained this to me this again disclaimer is just how i've understood it based on my research and based on the little looking into the little the obsessive looking into it that i've been doing over the past couple of weeks basically which is also why i'm not like uploading on my regular schedule because as much as like i want to i have to do so many things to the house to get it ready to be listed so i'm just gonna give you a sneak peek of the guest room what it's looking like right now and i'm so happy with the way it's turned out like i've wanted this guest room to look like this for so long literally since the day i moved in and it's been almost two years kind of one and a half i don't know but um yeah i really 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 wanted to fix up this room and i'm so glad i finally have a reason to so yeah the the thing we're talking about in this relatively short video is listing so what i initially wanted to do was to do a private room listing um which is also what i'm going to start with right so okay okay <laughs> let's let's try to put some structure into this right so the options that i have based on my situation where if you're not aware i do have a three-bedroom house that i live in is that i want to start with a private room listing so this means that i get to live in the house and invite someone else to come and live in my spare room basically so we would share common spaces like um the sitting room the kitchen the front yard the backyard the parking like all of that would be a shared space and that sounds terrifying it really does because that's that's the only option i thought that i had and it was very off-putting to me because it's just a stranger right and if you're lucky it's a stranger every single day of the month which is it's kind of crazy but to be honest the only reason i was willing to even consider this and i've been told the legality of this is like questionable maybe but this is what's making me feel safe in my house so i'm going to show it to you for like a second so don't freak out but i don't know if you've come across these things before don't know if you can see that spark or not but i do have a taser i actually got this at a garage like a couple of years ago just um i think there was a time that a lot of carjackings were happening so this was brought into the market because you keep it in your car with you and if someone like tries to smash your window or open your car door you just zap the shit out of them and then drive away and at least it's like you know it adds to your safety precautions safety measures right so when i moved into this house i brought it into the house with me because just in case someone tried to break in or something i'd be able to surprise them with it so now now, the only reason I was even open to considering having someone, a stranger, a complete stranger, have a copy of my house keys to just let themselves in and out as they please, which is ridiculous, is because I have this and I will be sleeping with this under my pillow because you do not attempt to attack Crystal and expect to survive it. Like, let's just be honest, this thing might kill you and that's not really a me problem, right? So that is the only reason a private listing was even on the books because I just thought I'm not, I think I even mentioned it in the previous video, like I'm not emotionally prepared to just walk away from my whole house and just like leave it to strangers right so if i'm here i feel like it will be a lot less likely that the person is like gonna throw a party and break everything or try to like walk out with my tv or something you know so yeah there are a couple of safety precautions i'm taking in this airbnb journey and this is definitely one of them and the fact that i got it for like 1800 shillings is ridiculous so if you can get one definitely get one just for your own protection right but um 
yeah so the first option is a private room listing so that means my guest room and all the shared spaces in the house are shared by the person and by me now i was concerned because one thing that i've learned in all of this airbnb research that i've been doing is that most airbnb hosts around the world don't allow locals to book their listing so whether you're in like I want to say Italy, but that's a country. Whether you're in Venice, that's a city, right? Yeah, whether you're in Venice, you don't allow people who live in Venice to book your listing because then they want to do things in your house that they're not comfortable doing in their houses versus someone coming from like across a border that just needs a place to stay, right? So that is another security measure that you can implement to make sure your private listing isn't going to be abused by someone or even like your home basically isn't going to be abused by someone, right? So yeah, I'm not going to be having like a private listing for someone who is local to just come and like sleep in my house that's kind of terrifying though right like people watch me on youtube and then decide i want to have a sleepover with crystal that is terrifying so yeah i'm not really going to allow those my friend actually explained to me that we have an advantage because he sort of lives on Mombasa Road as well that we have the advantage of having industrial plants in this general area like the epz and like athi river is known for all these things and like the cement factories and that they periodically have expatriates who come into the country and just need a place to stay so the kind of people that are privately listing would attract are people who are coming for an extended period to a new country and don't really want to feel lonely in it so my initial thought and i think i haven't mentioned this in my previous video is that i was thinking i'll just create a self-contained studio in my master bedroom like with a kitchen and i have my own bathroom and everything and then i'll just like abandon the rest of the house and never come outside as much as i booked a private room like i would give them the whole house basically right but then my friend who does the private listings like he has a guest room that he rents out he explained to me that the guests would feel like that's that's kind of counterproductive to what they're aiming for when they book a private room in someone's home like they want a local to sort of guide them through the local experience versus just being left alone to their own devices so they might kind of feel like they're intruding if i'm too distant or something i it's like finding a balance because again i didn't grow up with any siblings so i don't actually know how to share a space so it's a lot to learn and that was kind of intimidating to me but again i feel like once i had a very extended conversation with my friend about this and yeah it, it made me feel like it's actually doable because they just want someone to like to like you know like check in with them like they wouldn't just go missing and like no one will ever know that they were ever here like if they get stuck somewhere and they need to figure out how to get back home they can just message me and i can like help them out in a more personal way versus having a whole house listing to themselves and they kind of feel a bit abandoned there you know like i don't know if that makes sense so that is a private room listing those are the benefits those are the precautions that we're taking with a private room listing and i think that's where i definitely want to start but what i really realize is that I can actually have multiple listings on the same house right so I can do a private one bedroom listing where they have their own private room and private bathroom but a shared common space but I can also just lock up my other two bedrooms and rent out the entire space as a one bedroom listing which like I know it seems so obvious but when I realized this like my mind was blown basically you know so I just need to do a couple of things to the house to get myself comfortable enough to just leave and have someone come and take over my entire space <laughs> without my personal supervision so one thing that i'm definitely looking into is getting cctv cameras which is such a nightmare that's been part of the thing that's been stressing me out this past week because i'm trying to understand how to set up a very very simple system and it just seems impossible like how am i getting a quotation for thirty thousand for one camera one camera when i'm seeing adverts on facebook someone selling the actual camera unit for 1500 shillings so where is the rest of this money going i don't understand so if anyone has a cctv business please like comment down below like leave me your email address or your phone number or something so that i can talk to you about it because i literally just want one camera pointing outside i can't have cameras inside the property and i'm perfectly okay with that because airbnb will reimburse me for anything they try to steal or break or whatever so i just need the footage of my gate to show the ins and the outs of the guest that's it right because i've been watching like different like horror story videos and like horror stories from guest side and also from host sides because it's important to understand both perspectives right so one of the hosts was like his guest um left the unit came back to the house and found the door open and she called him in like a panic that someone has been in here someone broke in it's unsafe i'm packing my bags and leaving but he could so easily pull up the footage and show her that she's the one who left the house unlocked when she left and so coming back to find it unlocked is entirely her fault so she like calmed down and there wasn't a need for a refund and there wasn't like escalation to airbnb and just all of these little issues can definitely be avoided if you have video cameras 
camera evidence of what's going on and also video evidence that can't be tampered with by the guests so i'm hesitant to get like a wi-fi camera because if they just turn off my wi-fi then i'm basically blind you know and if i'm going to be as far away as Wundani, which is taita which is quite quite a distance you know so it's not like i'm just across the road that i can pop over whenever something goes wrong you know so i need a consistent cctv system so i definitely want it hardwired but i will only ever need one camera like i'll never need to upgrade to four cameras so having to buy a whole four channel unit for ten thousand shillings is just ridiculous to me so yeah if there's uh, if you have any ideas of a cctv system that could work for me even if it's like a doorbell because again i would love to have the keypad like the coded um entry lock things but then it's it's a bit pricey and then i don't know if i actually want to invest that much up front so that's why i said that i want to start with a private room listing because then as that is picking up and i can actually see the value in this business then i'm able to upgrade to other things versus throwing so much money at airbnb up front and then it doesn't quite pick up the way i'm hoping you know so yeah i can rent out that same the exact same private room setup the only difference being that i'm not in the house and that also allows me to rent it at a higher price which is great so um yeah and then also the cameras allow you to enforce your rules so if i say like no smoking on the property and then i have footage of you coming outside to smoke or throwing away a cigarette butt or something or i mean again footage of you trying to like walk out with my washing machine that's questionable the number of guests on the property is limited if i'm giving you a one bedroom house that hosts two people and you want to sleep 10 people here the wear and tear on the house is so much more the utility use like the electricity and water is so much more the risk of things breaking is so much more so um yeah just having video footage of that is very very important so if you are going to do airbnb and you're not going to be on the property you need a way to actually record what's happening at least on the outside general areas obviously don't put cameras in people's bedrooms don't put cameras in like corridors i find that so weird in the sitting room just sitting here knowing you're being watched is so weird so yeah yeah and also airbnb has rules okay yeah yeah um yeah so that is my second option just the exact same setup so it doesn't really take too much more investment from me just the outdoor cctv system the third setup that i'm thinking because i've actually come to terms with the fact that i might actually not need to live here at all and if i can live away from here and still be generating some degree of income that would be amazing and so those expatriates that we're talking about possibly targeting from like these industrial companies around here they might travel with like their whole family so my third listing on airbnb would be a two-bedroom house so i would move all of my private stuff to the third bedroom it's small and it is so overflowing right now so that's like very intimidating trying to figure out how i'm going to clean all of that out but if i can rent out the guest room and my bedroom then i can increase my income exponentially because um having a house that hosts four people or more is definitely going to get you more money per night um and then uh it can also be rented for longer periods so then as long as i have the camera system outside then i'm good all i need to do is like top up utilities electricity and water and that's perfectly fine if you're paying me a hundred dollars a night you know and then my room is big enough that i can have two queen beds in there so instead of sleeping four people i can sleep six people and then i don't really want someone sleeping on my couch i feel like that's sweating into my cushions is just not ideal but again i do allow one extra guest and then i start charging you for the second and the third and whatever so um cameras will take care of all of that and airbnb will enforce those charges so yeah listing options if you are thinking of setting up an airbnb definitely look into as many options as you can especially if you're doing it in a house that you live in personally because if i needed to be in nairobi i would still be able to list both rooms with three beds sleep six people make 10 12 000 a night and go rent a studio right next door right so that i can still be in nairobi commuting to work or whatever and still be able to generate income from the house that i'm living in so yeah i also i found out that there is a house in this estate that is airbnb um but i think just i haven't put in the correct settings to find it on airbnb but i found it in an airbnb group so another thing i would suggest is joining the airbnb facebook groups um they're very informative you see the different issues that people have so um yeah it's just it's it's important to see how other hosts handle guests and see what do you think is reasonable what do you think isn't what type of wording can you use for specific scenarios it's a whole interesting world to sort of be stepping 
dipping dipping my toe into but i'm really excited so the guest room is actually officially done and i don't know if you can see my finger here i hurt myself because i was painting and i kind of fell off of my makeshift ladder and that's that's kind of what slowed us down so i really wanted to like get it done and get it ready in seven days but that that was kind of ambitious you know so i'm okay with taking a bit more time because one other thing i've learned about listings is that when you create a new listing on airbnb they boost you for the first month so the first month that you're on the platform your listing is a first search result and it's like marked as new which is amazing right so i don't want the old pictures to be the boosted listing which isn't looking very attractive like it's not looking really great so um yeah that's another thing to be careful of but the good thing is that you can delete an old listing and create a new one which i guess is how people circumvent like bad reviews you just delete a whole profile and like start afresh but again if you have good reviews on that profile then you won't want to delete it and create a new one just to have that extra boost so it's like a bit of a of a give and take i have the two bedroom currently active on airbnb right but then i've blocked off the dates until like april so if anyone booked me today for april then i would know to like hurry up and get my master room ready to be rented but then um because there hasn't been any interest there then i can just focus on the actual guest room and i get that perfect and get that done and then um sort of grow from there so my plan right now is to start with a private room listing as i'm hopefully making a bit of cash from that then i can reinvest that into the house versus just using the little cash that i have now and then going broke and having nothing to show for it you know so yeah that is how we are buying time until mombasa road is done being constructed so this is very very exciting but very terrifying i feel like i've rejigged this whole like i had to borrow furniture from like my bedroom from the sitting room from everywhere to like make the guest room work so i'm really excited about how it's turned out i'm really really excited that i'm in the final stretch of that i just need to paint my corridor paint my inner corridor paint my outer corridor and then i think i'm done i feel like at that point the guest just comes and finds what they find you know especially because your new listing like your prices are gonna be lower than what you're hoping they'll regularize to be so if you're getting a good deal like should some little bit of water damage on the walls really bother you i don't know but um yeah i'm hoping i'm hoping everything works out <laughs> and i have this to enforce things working out right because boundaries are very important and i've watched enough airbnb guest horror stories about creepy hosts like coming into their room at night or something so all my doors have locks for sure and i'm still not comfortable with like giving people copies of keys to my house but then like i have a strategic way that i'm planning to do that so eventually we'll talk about like the security measures that i'm taking for this house but um yeah i think i'm gonna end the video here so that it's not too long thank you for dropping by thank you for watching if you have any thoughts any pieces of advice to share i am very very open 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 recipient like i'm very open to hearing your thoughts and opinions and and advice and again i feel like it's it's not the best like it's probably a good way to like boost the listing but then it's not the best idea to publicly share a private room listing in my home here because i don't want weirdos like trying to book you know it's just it's just finding the balance in life you know so yeah i'm gonna end the video here thank you for watching thumbs up if you enjoyed it and i will see you in the next video